A warm welcome to our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. You're watching The World Today. I'm Amarachi Ubani. Here's what's coming up within the hour. The World Health Organization condemns Israeli airstrike on Gaza school, says the carnage in Gaza must end. Ex-CIA officer Alexander Yokcheng Ma, charged with spying for China, bags 10-year jail sentence. Plus, over 400 children and teenagers rescued from suspected sexual abuse in Malaysia. Stay with us. The World Health Organization has condemned Israel's strike on the al Jauni school in central Gaza. They left at least 18 people killed. WHO Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus said the carnage in Gaza must stop, adding that no words can reflect the true horror and loss of life in the besieged strip. Meanwhile, the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees... Onwa says six of its employees are among those killed in the airstrike. Gaza's civil defense agency says a school at the Nosrat refugee camp was used as a shelter by thousands of displaced Palestinians. Commenting on details of the operation, the Israeli military said it carried out what it called a precise strike on terrorists, planning attacks from the school, and they had taken measures to avoid harm to civilians. Hamas has denied these claims. Meanwhile, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has condemned the situation in Gaza as totally unacceptable. He says Gaza has witnessed a series of military occupations by Israel, also indicating Hamas has committed several violations of international law. How would you sum up? In the case of Gaza, let's be clear. We must condemn firmly what was the horrible terror attacks that Hamas has produced. But then afterwards, we have witnessed a, a, a series of military interventions uh, by Israel in Gaza uh, with a level of death and destruction that has no parallel in my time as Secretary General, and with uh, very dramatic violations of international humanitarian law and the uh, total absence of an effective protection of civilians. The Hamas also committed several violations of international humanitarian law, and there is the absolutely horrendous question of the hostages, but um, uh, it is clear that what's happening in Gaza is totally unacceptable. And uh, uh, it is this kind of limbo of accountability that is totally unacceptable and that requires also a serious a serious reflection namely in the context of uh, the summit of the future and in the context of all attempts uh, to do a serious reform of our institutions in another development authorities in the occupied west bank say an israeli raid is continuing in the city of tolkam and its refugee camps despite israel's withdrawal from the area last week According to the Palestinian news agency Wafa, at least four Palestinians have been killed so far, three of whom were killed in a drone attack on a vehicle, while another killed by an Israeli sniper near the city of Tubas. The killings took the overall death toll from Israel's large-scale operation launched in the West Bank on August 28th to at least 50. There have been no comments from Israel on the latest developments in the occupied West Bank. I want to bring in now the VOA's Linda Gratstein. She's in Jerusalem. Linda, great to see you. As always, the Palestinians say the IDF has not left the West Bank despite announcing departure last week. Can you confirm that these soldiers really have pulled out of the area or are they still there? Well, first of all, there are thousands of Israeli soldiers in the West Bank. There are half a million Jewish settlers there. There are checkpoints. But what the army was talking about was 
areas including the Janine refugee camp, Tulkaram, Tubas. Um, the army will not confirm or deny that they are currently operating in Tulkaram, as the Palestinians say, uh, but they do say that they constantly reserve the right to go in uh, to prevent terror attacks. And there has definitely been increasing tensions in the West Bank in the last few weeks. Uh, quite a few attempted terror attacks. Yesterday, a soldier was killed when a Palestinian rammed a truck into a bus stop near a Jewish settlement. Um, so tensions are increasing, and the army says that it will do whatever it needs to to try to prevent terrorist attacks. And you know, Linda, for the first time, and I think in a while, we're hearing the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres act actually apportioning blame to the Hamas militants, saying that they also have violated international law. But these attacks on the Gaza score, the UNRWA representatives, six of whom died recently, I know the idea says it's airstrikes are targeted at Hamas militants, but you have to admit sometimes that the death toll and the people killed calls for concern. Well, first of all, if you look at even the, you know, the footage that you guys just broadcast, you see how crowded the situation is. So, you know, these schools are just jammed. You've got, you know, several families in each classroom. So even if Israel says that it's using precision strikes and intelligence and all of these things, uh, it does seem that innocent people are going to get killed. At the same time, uh, in this uh, latest strike on the school in Nusayrat, refugees camp, Israel uh, said that of the 18 who were killed, nine were actually Hamas uh, militants, and of those nine, three were actually employees of UNRWA. So Israel's releasing names. It says that of the nine who were involved, they said they were actually involved in October 7th in coming over the border in the attacks on Israeli communities that killed 1,200 people and 250 people were taken hostage. Um, so the fact that Israel is releasing these names, I think, shows, first of all, that it is sensitive to this international criticism. But at the same time, uh, you know, Israel says it is going to do whatever it needs to to try to uh, stop both future terrorist attacks and attacks on Israeli soldiers in Gaza. Yes, yeah, so and the issue of using human shields uh, by Hamas militants has been a, a, an age-old argument between Israel and Hamas. And that's the reason Israel says, you know, these death tolls are going up. But the Gaza Health Ministry has been documenting the number of people killed. You're telling us now um, nine of them were Hamas militants and then three were UNRWA representatives. Um, who's to say really how many people uh, were innocent civilians and how many were not? You do have to admit, though, at some point, the Israelis have to say enough is enough with the killings. Well, first of all, the Hamas total death toll is over 41,000, according to Hamas. They don't distinguish between combatants and civilians. Uh, Israel says it's killed at least 17,000 Hamas militants. Um, but I think there are two reasons that it's still not really resonating with the Israeli public. The first is uh, because there's so little international uh, journalists allowed into Gaza, um, and Israelis are just not seeing this on their uh, TV screens and things like that. They're seeing, I mean, obviously they see a little bit, but most of it is about the Israeli soldiers and civilians who were killed. It's about the hostages. There are still 97 of the original 251 hostages being held in Gaza, although at least a third of them are dead, maybe more. Um, there was wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the death of the six hostages, including Israeli-American Hirsch. Goldberg, Poland. Um, so, you know, Israel's just not seeing the deaths of civilians. Beyond that, um, I think that Israelis say that Hamas initiated this conflict and that Israel doesn't want a situation where it agrees to a ceasefire and then in three years or five years or whenever, Hamas launches another attack, as they have said that they intended to do. So I think that even though a lot of Israelis are concerned about the death toll in Gaza, uh, um, and certainly about innocent civilians being killed, they sort of feel that uh, this is the time to sort of finish Hamas. 
the criticism uh, from some on the left in Israel is that the Israeli prime minister has refused to come up with a day after plan, has refused to help organize or allow an alternative to Hamas, uh, namely the Palestinian Authority, which is based in Ramallah, and that there's really no long-term strategy. And so that means that this war just continues without any kind of a long-term strategy. I just wanted to point out here, Linda, um, the issue of selective reporting is not only uh, a fault of Israeli media. Other Arab nations are also selectively reporting what is, you know, being portrayed to their own uh, pop populations, their own uh, viewers. Uh, they, they do portray Israel as the perpetrator here without actually saying why. But it does look like the UN is helpless, however, when it comes to the war in Gaza. You spoke about the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and how he is not uh, proposed what will happen after the war. Does the Prime Minister still enjoy the support from his cabinet in this war? Are there beginning to be dissenting voices like um, we heard in the uh, past couple of weeks or so? There have been, there's some dissent, for example, from the defense minister, Yoav Gallant, and there have been a lot of uh, speculation in the Israeli press that Netanyahu is just waiting for an excuse to fire him. Uh, he tried to do that, actually, before the war, and there were was such a huge public outcry against that that he kind of, uh, you know, uh, retreated from that idea. At the same time, his government, his coalition government is quite stable. Uh, he has a clear majority. Uh, he has the support of the ultra-Orthodox. He has the support of the far right wing uh, that we've talked about before. Uh, and, you know, they even though they've threatened to pull out, for example, the far right has said that if he signs a ceasefire deal, uh, they would pull out. They're not moving all that fast to pull out. They don't want to give up their government budgets. They don't want to give up their powerful positions in the government, their ministries. So right now it looks like his government is, is quite stable. And it seems like Netanyahu Netanyahu and the leader of Hamas, Yahya Sinwar, share uh, an, an attempt or share a, a willingness to keep this war going and not to move towards a ceasefire. Uh, the Israeli public, I think, um, is clearly in favor of a ceasefire. You've seen growing demonstrations on the streets. Um, last Saturday night, there were more than half a million people in Tel Aviv and another couple hundred thousand around the country. The entire population of Israel is less than 10 million. So you, you are talking about uh, public demonstrations, public frustration, but the actual government does look like it's pretty stable right now. Yes, and in just a few weeks, uh, we'll be counting down to the first anniversary of the attacks by Hamas on Israel on October 7th, and then the Israeli attacks uh, launched against Hamas militants in Gaza. As Israelis look uh, uh, ahead to, you know, these anniversaries, what is going through people's minds and how do they intend to mark out to commemorate uh, the events? Well, first of all, I think there's people are feeling very sad about it. And for a lot of people, it's basically still October 7th. And, and, and I think the entire country really is in trauma. Uh, as I said, if the population is less than 10 million, everybody knows somebody who was either killed uh, or was a hostage or is a hostage. Um, Israel's a very small country where everybody kind of knows everybody else. And, you know, the radio 24 hours a day is still filled with stories of what happened on October 7th. Um, the People are to have moved back to a lot of the areas near Gaza, not all of them, but some of them, um, including areas where Hamas took over and, uh, you know, attacked and killed people. Uh, I think there are there's an official commemoration that's being sponsored by the government, and a lot of the uh, families of those killed do not want to be part of that. They so they're going to hold their own ceremony, uh, and uh, there's going to be uh, you know there's a lot of I think self reflection. In fact, just today, just now, the head of uh, the very well known intelligence unit in the army, which is eight eight two o o, which is the signal intelligence, and he resigned and said 
that he, uh, you know, made mistakes and his, his, you know, the people he was in charge of by not uh, having the, you know, the intelligence or not listening to the intelligence that they had. Um, other, some senior military officials have resigned or said they intend to resign. Uh, there's definitely kind of a, a, a sad feeling in the country, kind of a heavy feeling. Um, the attack on October 7th was the last day of a month of Jewish holidays, and those holidays start in just a couple of weeks. Um, but there certainly is not really. People don't feel like celebrating the holidays. Uh, people are just very sad. Uh, I, I can imagine, Linda. Thanks again for speaking with us, and do stay sure. safe. Now, a former Central Intelligence Agency CIA officer identified as Alexander Chingma has been sentenced today to 10 years in prison for espionage. The 71-year-old charged with spying for the Chinese government was arrested in August 2020 after admitting to an undercover FBI agent that he sold United States secrets to China. Born in Hong Kong, but now a naturalized U.S. citizen, the ex-CIA officer, was said to have collaborated with a relative who was also a CIA agent to supply secrets to intelligence officers employed by the Shanghai State Security Bureau. According to his plea uh, agreement, he must cooperate with prosecutors for the rest of his life, including by submitting to debriefings by U.S. government agencies. The plea deal also requires him to submit to polygraph tests during those debriefings. In Malaysia, police have successfully rescued 402 children and teenagers at dozens of Islamic charity homes in the country amid a sexual abuse investigation. Police suspect the minors were physically and sexually abused across 20 care homes in two Malaysian states. The children rescued comprised 201 boys and 201 girls aged between 1 and 17 years. A total of 171 arrests were made in connection with the incident. The detained suspects include religious teachers and caretakers. Speaking at a press conference, Malaysian Inspector General of Police said the minors endured various forms of abuse, with some allegedly forced to perform sexual acts on other children. The police also found that some of the victims who were unwell were not allowed to seek medical treatment in hospitals until in critical condition. He added that the homes were all run by Global Equan Services and Businesses, which has been linked to the now defunct Malaysia-based Al Akram religious sect, which was banned by the government in 1994.